Deborah, with her 30 years of being an entrepreneur and creating over seven companies, knows exactly what it means to accept the mission. When you make that decision, when you accept the mission to become a solopreneur, to take yourself and your talents to market, then you embrace a life of not only unlimited possibilities, but also the unknown. It's an elixir of fear and bravery that only someone who's taken the leap really understands. On our show, Deb digs deep with her guests to highlight what you, the listener, wants to know. The stories, the whys, and the hows to navigate the journey to success. Get ready to hear from some of the most incredible mission takers from Generation Z to Boomers. So sit up, perk up, and get ready to be blown away. Now here is your host, Deborah Drummond. All right. I know. I'm getting to the point now where I actually have to think about the next word that I'm going to use to describe you. Incredible people. You are the best, best guest ever. Today, this week, you're going to be the boldest. You're going to be the boldest. We're coming out to a pretty bold season here. You guys are the boldest, and which means that I know that you are passing on these interviews, so you're going to double down. You're going to double down on passing out these interviews. I'm so excited. As you know, we have all sorts of very cool people that come onto the show show and um, self-funding and gumption is really at the core of what people are, whether they're an entrepreneur or a singer, or an entrepreneur, or they're in media, like these darn good podcast hosts. Anyways, it takes a little bit of mm, to do this. And I love, 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 love having all sorts of different businesses on here. And I can tell you that Liam, who's going to join us today, is the first person that I've taught on. Now, you guys know I've got a little bit of background in fashion and clothing and that because my son and my daughter both went into this industry. Um, but this is the first time that I met a gentleman who's rocking it in the world of, and I'm going to let him tell you the product that he's uh, taken to market. So, Liam, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this for uh, many days, actually. Um, awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be here. So thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Well, you know what? Here's the cool thing, you guys. Um, you know, the world's been a little funky, mm, right? And how we meet people has been funky. And so, you know, most of you know that a lot of my reach in terms of my business, and it's changed. I've been in business for 31 years. So there's been all sorts of different things that people use for marketing, connecting. But, you know, we've all had an interpersonal relationship with Zoom and our phones and our, you know, digital world in the last three years. And some of the cool stuff about that is I know I met people that I would never have met otherwise. And so me and Liam were, uh, we hadn't met, but we were both in the same authorship. You know, one of those, you know, one of those innovative marketing tools that I talk about. Um, and I was going through this book and there was a number of us in there. And I was like, you know what, if anyone gleams out at me, I'm going to just invite him onto the show. And this guy gleamed out at me. So Liam, let's not keep our audience waiting any longer. You are a, what people would consider a younger entrepreneur. You've been playing in this world a little bit and you are 24 years old and you are embarking and it reminds me of me. Maybe that's why. I was like, I started in my twenties. Um, so fair warning, <laughs> fair <laughs> warning, 30 years from now, you're going to be having, hey, I remember this. I remember this time in my life, but uh, tell us about your <clears throat> company and it has something to do with what do you well um I'm, I'm very very fortunate uh over the last year and a half i was able to bring my passion project uh puckering peach to market which is uh extraordinary puckering peach is a, a men's underwear line and we are just having the best time we really are um it was something that I've always wanted to do. Me and my friends back, you know, five years ago, we're always joking, um, you know, making references and stuff. And it just like, it came to me because I wanted to do something unique and cool. And I felt that an underwear line kind of went hand in hand with, you know, like what I'm about and what I'm into. And it was just a really, really good idea. And at the time, uh, when we started all of this, when we started like brainstorming and getting ideas, it came so naturally that it was almost meant to happen. Yeah. Right. So I, I'm very, very uh, ecstatic about the whole, the whole Puckering Peach company, all the photo shoots and all the community engagement that we're doing. It, it's really special actually. Yeah. 
So that's cool. You know what? I always talk about entrepreneurs sometimes, you know, there's different reasons why people become an entrepreneur and there's different reasons why people make that decision. Sometimes they're outsourced. Sometimes they're, you know, they get fired. Sometimes they get, you know, replaced. Sometimes they have someone in their life that's like, do this with me, do this with me, do this with me, you know? And then sometimes I think there's people that are just born to have this creative mind. And then there's the, I just knew it meant to be, I just knew I needed to happen. Just, I mean, it reminds me, there's a book that I'm producing and it's going to launch in 2024. And I knew when I was 30. So that was clearly not yesterday. Um, but it was, but, and so, so sometimes things come to fruition really quickly and sometimes they don't. So, you know, you, you said you and your, your buddies were kind of hanging out and you were talking now, did you decide to make an underwear company because the underwear you guys were wearing wasn't suiting your needs or was it just like, hey, this is kind of cool. We all wear underwear and I want to do something that's better on the market. Like, where does that come from? Well, I guess you could say that uh, at the time, all of my <laughs> friends, they're all really hot. And you know what? We were just, you know, having a good time, relaxing at home. And we were like, damn, like we could really do something together. So, you know, a bit of background about myself. Like I classically trained as a chef. I'm a Red Seal chef. Um, I've worked for uh, as a professional chef for five years. And it's a great creative field. It's really good. Um, that's kind of where the creativity was born from. Translating that into uh, my entrepreneurship with Parker and Peach, um, it's, it just came so naturally because I wanted to do something. Um, you know, in the culinary world, you know, everyone wants to create you know, beautiful dishes and amazing menus and stuff, but it all takes steps. So it was kind of hand in hand with Parker and Peach. Everything was just a step to get it to the next level, to get it to the next, you know, place in the drawing board. And then we were able to execute it. It was really something for me, you know, myself, like I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I, I look good in underwear, I guess you could say. And especially on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. For me though, I was always thinking, um, you know, in my, in my collection, I was like, damn, like, you know, I really like this garment, but there's something about it that's not perfect. Or it's like the fit doesn't um, fit perfectly or, you know, the design is very weird or, you know, like, I don't like the brand because of whatever they stand for. And I just wanted to do something for myself. And I thought that uh, it'd be good to take all the things that I wanted out of an amazing pair of underwear and then put it all together. So essentially that's what I've done. Yeah. So tell us the process. So, I mean, I know because I, I have a son that's going through the process right now and he's different. He, it's in streetwear. So obviously it's different, but it's same, same. I mean, that's the thing about entrepreneurship. It's different, but it's same, same. Like if I sell a book or you sell underwear, I know that there's stress that you got to go through just like I do, right? Suppliers, dates, you know, photo shoots, video shoots, marketing, the whole aspect of it. So it's one thing to kind of come up with a concept and then how did it flow from there? Like, did you, how did you, did you decide to self-fund it? Did you go get a grant? Did you like, where did you, where did, how did it go from concept to, Hey, I've got some cool underwear and you can go buy them online. Well, it was, it was really special actually because puckering peach has not been like a new idea or even in the last two years, I, I have um in my, you know, very deep in my closet, I have very old sketches that date back to like 2018 of, you know, like puckered peach and what it could look like and different, you know, different cute little sketches and stuff. Um, that's, you know, probably the furthest back it's been. But mm -hmm. uh, a year and a half ago during COVID, um, you know, I was, we were all at home. We were bored. Nothing's going on. So I was like, you know what? This is the perfect time to utilize all this extra time and build something for myself. And I thought it was really special because I was able to do it not only with myself, but I was able to collaborate with all my friends too. So it's kind of like a, a group effort in a way. Right. But starting up, of course, it's it's a challenge. It's very it, not very difficult, I would say, but there's a lot of learning you need to do. So myself, I was trained as a chef. I don't know anything about fashion, but I was able to learn. I was able to look at people that I trust um, and you know, good examples. And I was able to take that and then kind of find my own way and navigate basically to my desired outcome, which was a lot better than I had ever expected, actually, which I was very happy to see at the, at the final production cut, we had the most amazing underwear and I was very happy. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So you know what you guys, if you're out there and you have 
um, some drawing on a napkin that you did five years ago, or you've always kept that piece of paper in your journal or your, you know, top drawer desk, and there's that idea and you don't know whether to execute or not. Don't throw those things away. Like, don't throw those things away. Like I said, there's, here I am, you know, 25 years later producing a book and I could not even imagine on the grandest scale um, because I got frustrated that a day planner that I was using, it was called the woman's day book. And I swore by, it. you know, when you have a good planner. So I was like, and it went out of print and I went out of my mind. Like, look, there was no Google back then. There was no, Hey, I could order something that just was out of my, if it was out of print, I went to every bookstore I can imagine. It was out of print. And I'm like, and I said it deep inside, I'm going to do a women's planner one day. Well, now I did a planner in a woman's book. That's how it formulated. But I always remember that. So if you guys, I mean, that's a really powerful thing. Just those drafts or those sketches, just don't throw them away. You never know when that's going to come to fruition. So when you decided to do that, you talked about you and your friends. Or is this a business that you're on your own? Do you have partners in it? Like, how does it work? So uh, I, I'm a self-funder. I started everything myself. Of course, like I have had collaboration from friends, you know, like input and different ideas. And like, I, I trust my friends uh, very much so. So mm -hmm. their input was very, very important to me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm self-funded. I basically navigated this entire craziness all by myself. And it was tough, but I chose to do it, which of course I knew would be tough. Um, yeah, it, it was very tough to start, you know, getting the concept together, allocating the funds, you know, like by material and finding a reputable production. Uh, of course, in Canada, I didn't want anything overseas. So we we basically, when I say we, I, I mean myself. I, I like yeah. to be inclusive as possible. But oh, clearly. absolutely. We, you and the universe, at the very least, on those days where you're like, is there anyone here but me and the universe? Like, I got your back, dude, Liam, we got this. <laughs> About a year and a half ago, when I when I you know put the nail in the coffin to really start this project, I had the perfect amount of people in my life that were willing to collaborate, that had expertise, that you know have done something like this before, and they just wanted to share knowledge. So I was very lucky to have great influence um, by these you know external collaborators, and I kind of found my own path based on all the information that they gave me, and I. I'm so grateful to have those mm -hmm. people and I, and people that were with me and, you know, talking with me and saying, Oh, you should do this or, Oh, you should do this from the very start are still here. And they're saying, you know what, Liam, you've done a terrific job and it feels really good. Not only to, you know, get that praise from people that believed in me, but to get the project to a place where I never thought I'd actually be, which was really special. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're just, you know, you're reiterating a very um, common but strong piece. There's so many people and I, and I say that um, because as entrepreneurship has become a more open, um, accepted form of employment, for lack of a better word, where if someone wanted to go off and be an entrepreneur, we're not, we're, we're even talking 10, 15 years ago, it was like, Ooh, this is risky. And are you sure? And do you have a backup plan? And then there's been all these pioneers, obviously people that are supporting you right now, they kind of crack that code and crack that code and crack that code and crack that code to the point now where it really is, well, they're noticing a 12% less um, registration um, for college and universities. And people are really braving up from people that are like yourself and are like the people that are supporting you where it's not so different anymore. And people are really in a place. And I think like you talked about during the pandemic where people are like, you know what, this was a surprise that no one expected. And I think as much as it caused despair, it also caused this philosophy around life's too short. Things could change. If there was anything that I wanted to do, why not? Like, why not me? You know, why not me? So I think it's fantastic the the paradigm shift that has happened in the philosophy around doing something off the side of your desk or taking that risk or what have you, because it's at a place, I believe, culturally, like, why not? If you've got the opportunity, why not? So you're talking about a major principle that sometimes people have to really learn. And it's associations are incredibly powerful that, you know, the, the universal law is you know, the five people that you hang out with the most met with, you pretty well are going to sit somewhere in the middle. Like, 
philosophy, vision, financially. And they always say, so take a look at the people around if you're not where you want to be. So good on you and get on those people. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they get their more than fair share of free underwear. Um, always a nice perk to give to your advisors. Hey, guess what? Um, okay. Underwear. So. Yeah. So, so like let me, let me tell you about the, the first collection because uh, we launched the first collection in February. Um, the first collection I called the classic collection and it featured two different models, a, you know, a standard brief and also a, a specialty designed a high cut brief that I, you know, basically designed uh, from scratch. And those two come in variants of, you know, pink, white, and then also with a really cute silicone pink peach around the waistband. And actually, after we launched the classic collection, uh, a couple months down the road, I was able to release the, uh, the yellow electric peach limited edition uh, in high cut brief only. And since uh, I think the start of October, we'd actually sold out of the limited edition, which was really, really cool. And I couldn't be happier. I think that mm -hmm. the aesthetic works. I think that the color scheme works. And I was very lucky because when I went to design the underwear, I didn't want to design it based on necessarily how it would, you know, work for production or how it would work for costing. I wanted to create a really, really spectacular product. So what I did is I went to probably the most important part of the underwear for everybody is the materials. The materials are so important, not only because it needs to fit perfectly, it needs to be comfortable, it needs to be uh, resilient, of course. You know, you throw your intimate garments in the washing machine and it could be, um, you know, habit could wreak on those garments. So I had to design it very, very carefully just to make sure that every aspect of the underwear was perfect. Um, we, we went through a lot of testing. We went through mm -hmm. some crazy testing. Um, probably testing that not a lot of other underwear companies may have done. Like I, you know, was leaving it out uh, in the weather for a week just to see how it weather in that condition. I would soak it in water and then throw it in the microwave just to see what the fabric would do and how the reaction was. Um, we've lit some on fire. We've done, of course, the wine coffee stains just to test that aspect of them too. And I'm very happy because the material that I've chosen I sourced and then of course we brought it here and we uh, made the production in Canada. This underwear is really something because, you know, the it, it stretches, it's, it's, it's stretchy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It needs to be stretchy. It can't be like overstretched. And then, you know, there was a bunch of things that the material was pivotal for. And I think that we aced it. I really did. Um, well, I think that's an important part, Liam. Thank you for sharing that because you're talking about testing the product and that may or may not be something that people think of doing or, you know, next time we look at our underwear, you know, tomorrow morning, <laughs> we're going to go, hmm, wonder if they put this in our microwave. But um, it's very, <laughs> no, but it's very interesting that you have to test your product. And a lot of times people get really scared about that or nervous about that, or it can delay, you know, um, having a fashion Nista. I'd love to, you know, talk to your mom. Having a fashionista as a, as a you know, in the family, um, it has just that exactly what you're talking about. That perfect fabric has probably delayed us six months, but it's really it's an important piece. You know, it's an important piece um, to share. I think it's something that people really forget, particularly when they're buying a garment or looking to design a garment. A lot of people have that aspiration to make the perfect whatever. You know. Um, I mean, I don't know how many people I've talked to that that went and made the perfect bra because the bra didn't fit or it didn't this, didn't that, you know, mm -hmm. same kind of um, undergarment industry. But I, I, I think that's amazing that you that you did things like that to make sure that your product took it to, you know, to, when it went to, when it went to market, it went to market in its best form. Yeah. Um, like you spoke just recently about, uh, you know, having delays and stuff like that. Um, we like, when I say we, of course, I mean me, I experienced a ton of delays and setbacks and especially in the fashion industry, it's crazy. You know, you deal with suppliers and vendors and producers and marketers and all these other people. And, you know, like it's, it's crazy sometimes. Cause you're like, uh, you know, my chef career, right? It's very fast paced. It's very go, go, go. Like I need things yes. now, I need things done now. But in fashion, every, there's a problem at every step of the way. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because, um, you know, a year and a half into this, right? We we didn't launch um, 
for eight months until we had the perfect product, right? Mm -hmm. So we went through the prototyping phase that took forever. We took, you know, a lot of time to get the right materials. Um, of course, sourcing them at the right cost to make sense with all the costing of the, of the garments and then, you know, all that production. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me uh, in Vancouver, I, I had to have a made in Canada product. I had, um, I went to um, a design school, for instance, and they're like, oh yeah, like this is great. We can help you prototype. We can help you make your tech pack and everything like that. We can help you make your nests. But they were saying, oh yeah, like it'd be a lot cheaper to do this overseas. Like, you know, I have connections in Thailand and Malaysia and stuff. And I said, you know what? That's very sweet of you to recommend me all these fabulous places. But unfortunately I'm looking to be made in Canada because that's definitely a value and sorry not a value to the brand but that's the value that i want to uphold right essentially right. um yeah so we went through you know different producers and uh you know design people and i was really lucky because it seemed every step of the way i'd have a step back but then i'd have someone in my life that was able to collaborate with me to help get over that hurdle mm -hmm. um one of my best examples was finding my production I worked with probably the best production company in Vancouver and I would have had no idea about them if it wasn't for my good friend Luca who had recommended these people because they also had worked together on one of his projects. So the collaboration aspect was one of the most important parts of the Underline. Like of course like I I own the the, the brand and um, I don't have anyone else that's you know invested into the brand or is on paper or anything. But I really, really value all my friends that have kind of given me a little bit of their, you know, knowledge or, you know, connection or insight. That's the key. What, what I found, that's really the key um, is just, you know, taking feedback, not getting offended by the feedback. Because, of course, when you're a chef, right, you get feedback for everything. Oh, the dish was, you know, a bit too acidic or, you know, it was a bit too uh, overcooked if it was like a steak, for instance. Right. But you really just have to take that feedback and then run with it. And I found that because I've been through all of that in my chef career, it translated very seamlessly into my entrepreneurial career with Pucker and Peach. You, yeah. you, I mean, you talked about something pretty critical. I think um, when you're an entrepreneur, when you're the creator, it can be very difficult to take feedback. And that's where market research comes really in strongly. You clearly have a good circle around you. And even then taking it to market and taking it to market, and you might love that color green. You might think it is the most, you know, fantastic, fantastic color, but it, um, it's not the color that the market wants, or it's not in the top three. And you're not at that place in your business yet where you get to have those variables. You need to sell the best selling or the highest yielding. Um, and it's, and it can be difficult to, to as the creator, because there it's difficult to separate the company from ourselves right? Like it can come, it can feel like a personal insult for so many people. Just, I remember when I really was able to separate the company from myself and see it as an entity. I mean, that happens over the course of years. It's, you know, the more, the more butt kicking you take, the more, you know, <laughs> I call it <laughs> business esteem and self-esteem. Got to have self-esteem because your business is going to take a couple of hits. Someone's going to not like something. It's got nothing to do with you. So um, it is very interesting to get that feedback and not take it personally because it's your creation it's almost like it's your painting it's your mona lisa it's your you know it's your sculpture and someone's like mm, i don't know i think she should be smiling you know <laughs> and you're exactly. like what <sighs> yeah yeah absolutely so what other obstacle have you had to overcome like what what's been the internal dialogue for you well, speaking of what you just said, you know, I, I've had many, you know, people have praised me for my work with Parker and Peach, but people have also had critiques. Um, one of my friends, one of my good friends actually was like, Liam, your brand is trash. And I'm like, mm, okay. Uh, of course, there was no like, um, you know, there was no extension of that. It was just kind of like a, a statement. And I was like, okay. I was thinking in my head at the time, I'm like, my brand is trash. What does that translate into? I had, a, I had a moment where I had a, I had a thought and a picture in my head. I, I envisioned myself with fur and diamonds and silk and puckering peach underwear. And like, you know how like uh, someone would pop out of a cake at like a, a party or something? Yeah, absolutely. I was popping out of a garbage can <laughs> down, downstairs <laughs> in the bottom of the building. So I, I was like, I, I grabbed my roommate and I'm like, Americo, my roommate Americo, I grabbed him and I'm like, we need to go downstairs 
and take these photos. I have an amazing idea. It's crazy. It's ridiculous, but I think it will work. So what we did is we grabbed the fur, we grabbed the underwear, we grabbed like hilarious sunglasses, like, you know, like Kardashian style sunglasses. I'm downstairs hopping into the recycling bin and popping up with all this recycling. The photos are immaculate. It's, it's, it's really something. I'll send it to you after we're done. Um, Absolutely. It, it's truly, truly amazing. Uh, so <laughs> Puckering Peach, my, my life is trash or something like that. It was, it was a really, really funny <laughs> editorial that we did. Um, but yeah, no, like I, one of my favorite parts about this whole thing is that, you know, like people say, oh, entrepreneurship is really tough. It's hard. But at the same time, there's also a lot of gratification. And I actually have a lot of fun with what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I really, really, really love to like create, you know, interesting content. I love to bring people together during my photo shoots. We actually wrapped up um, two days ago. We did the ninth Puckering Peach photo shoot, and it was really, really, really spectacular. Um, I love to elaborate the, on that actually because it's it's really, really something. Um, I had connected with a photographer that does Fashion Week in New York and Vancouver, and I connected with him over Facebook. I just made a post like, hey, on like a Vancouver photographer page, anyone wants to collaborate, anyone wants to get together, do something cool, let's do it. So um, Mike, uh, this amazing photographer contacted me and said, hey, like I have a studio, I have, you know, your, your brand's very interesting. I love creative projects. We got together. I brought in a wide a range of models. I love, you know, to use, you know, real people, part of the community, I could go out to, you know, like Next Models or Wilhelmina and say, hey, give me your most gorgeous guys, whatever. But that, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough, you know? So I wanted to reach out to the community. I wanted to reach out to my friends. I wanted to have diversity. And, you know, I want people to say, why are you using that person as a model? He doesn't really fit the stereotypical model image. And Mm -hmm. that's exactly what I want. I want to bring in amazing creative unique people and it like it's just been amazing last photo shoot i had um you know like so many different ethnicities different people we had you know um people that were um you know very very thin uh, a bit um had a bit more weight to them which i actually encouraged i was like i want you i want you i had um uh i I met this man mark he's really cool he's uh he's 65 and I'm like, Mark, you're gorgeous. I want you and I want you now. Get in this photo shoot because you're stunning. And a lot of people are very hesitant, right? Because they say, oh, underwear modeling. You know, I don't, I don't think I have the confidence. I don't think I have the body type you're looking for. And I'm like, Mark, stop right there. You are fantastic. Bring all these people in. Sure, there's a bit of anxiety. People, you know, don't know really what to expect. Of course, you know, we we deliberate and give them, you know, exact information of what's going on, but they don't really know. 15, 20 minutes, half an hour into this photo shoot, people are having a blast. People are, mm-hmm. you know, getting out of their comfort zone. People are doing new experiences that they never would have thought they were doing, you know, a week ago. Uh, one of my good friends, Noah, um, I knew him before he transitioned uh, from high school. And I invited Noah to the photo shoots. He was so excited and so happy for the opportunity. And I was, I was, well, I was like, the fact that I can bring all these different people together and create this experience and have everyone say, wow, Liam, this was a really cool experience. I felt really comfortable. You made me feel really good. My self-esteem is through the roof. That's what I want to do. Like, that's that's probably one of the, like, of course, selling underwear is great. The money's great. But having that experience is hand in hand what I've always wanted to do is bring people together from every walk of life, every different type of person you can imagine. And at the end, we all went and had sushi together and it was amazing. So I don't know. I, yeah. I could go on forever about no, how- No, 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 no. I was going to say there's lots to, there's lots to, to, to um, have a conversation about in there. Um, I think I can imagine. So as you're talking, uh, it's, it's uncomfortable. I'm sure just being a non-model, you know, not someone who's a professional model. And we have friends and family that we drag into things all the time. I mean, I'm famous for it. I'm like, we're doing a video about Ireland. And you know what, Liam, this is great. So we're both in Vancouver, which is super cool. Beautiful, you know, lucky us, right? Lucky us, we get to live here. And um, 
we're going to, we're going to do some stuff together. So I'm going to be dragging you into things. Feel free to drag me into things. And we're going to, we're going to have some fun because I have the same philosophy about life. It's like, we just finished doing these videos and we're actually shooting at the Roxy on November 19th. I'll let you know. Do you like music? Love music. I've always okay, been a so, big okay, fan so, of music. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to do a shoot down there um, based around music for the walk across Ireland that I'm doing. And uh, it's going to be incredible. And I like you love just to have that collaborative collective feel and everyone has nervousness on a certain level. Look at even people like me and you, I've stood in front of 20,000 people before I would lie. If I didn't say before I walked up those stairs, I wanted to throw up. <laughs> like I'm like, there's 20,000 people I'm going to go talk to. Like we all have our sense of what that is. The more you do it, obviously the less nervous that you are, but when you get taken from an environment where one that's not yours, or even for me, when I go into another environment where I have a different level of expectations or play, there's a sense of nervousness around that. Um, so to be able to have uh, people get together and get comfortable not knowing each other in an underwear shoot and there's no tequila involved, I'm like, you know, hats off to you. Now, if there was, okay, that's the other part of the interview, right? So No, here, we didn't have any tequila. It, 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 it might have been a bit more, um, a bit more lively or creative or I, I don't know. Tequila yeah. uh, does work. Yeah, yeah. You know also, what I'm saying. it doesn't do You know what I'm saying. So uh, something to ease the, something to ease the nerves. Okay. So we you know what we did to... to ease the nerves. I was like, I, I looked at my um, videographer and production assistant, Alex. I was like, Alex, we need Lady Gaga's greatest hits right now on the big speaker. Let's go. As soon as art pop came on, everyone was like, wow, this is great. It's familiar. I feel I'm at, you know, like I'm at home listening to my favorite, you know, Lady Gaga track. It was really, really special because I've always been really into music. Music has been a big part of my life for a very long time. And it's really helped me regulate emotion and kind of discover how I truly feel about certain issues or certain topics or whatever. And the music amplified the room. It made it ecstatic and everyone was just, the vibe was created. The vibe was created. I okay, for so, I, uh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say- No, I was, I was gonna say, yeah. Club. Um, that statement that you just said, I'm literally going to get you to send me a video of you saying that. And I'm going to be posting what music means to you on the They Did It Tour Facebook group. And you guys that are listening, you guys know there's a They Did It Tour Facebook group. And it's for this big walk across Ireland that me and my girlfriend are doing. We're doing eight and a half marathons in eight days for to help um, people that are in the music industry. And so whatever they need, there's, you know, children and adults and women and just anyone in the music industry. Anyways. Um, we did a big collaborative video that um, we, instead of going around and saying, hey, this is what we're doing and this is why we need money and blah, blah, blah. And you guys know 85% of musicians can't pay their rent and Spotify pays 0.034%. So, you know, we need to help support these people that produce this music that makes us feel better because we get it for free. Most, I mean, who paid YouTube today? Not many people. So, I, you know, I could go on there, but what we did instead was talk about the project and we got all these people to come on the video. It's on the crowdfunding video. Um, and it's like, what does music mean to you? Like, what does music mean to you? Like, what does music mean to you? And when you really think about the power of music, um, just like you said, so anyways, people can go to, they did a tour, but I'd love to have your video on there because that's the whole premise. It's kind of like, you know, do you, you know, I don't, we are the world. I think I remember that song and everyone remembers that song because it just encompassed everybody. And it sounds like you have that collaborative way of thinking of doing business and really doing life, which takes me to a question. I'm going to, I'll just ask you something about yourself personally. So um, outside of your business, so, so that we get it, you know, in a sense of who you are, what's something about you that we don't know? What's something that you would like to share that we don't know? And it, it could be anything. It could be, I, I bungee jumped uh, backwards up off a crane in Montreal and screamed, Hey, I'm from Vancouver. Now I did that. People don't know. But what about you? <laughs> what's something we don't know about you? Um, I don't know. Like, like there's there's a ton I could say like I, I I could talk about how I'm really really into you know um the study of like quantum science um space I'm really interested in that kind of thing mm -hmm. I, I like like I love Star Wars for instance I'm a huge Star Wars geek um okay uh I, I don't know like I, I could go no, on no, that's, I, I, that's I, I've done a ton of you know different uh I don't I, I couldn't really tell you Asking me so candidly, I, I I wish I had prepared um, some cool, unique stuff. No, 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 that's it. That the Star Wars geek and yeah. the and the quantum <laughs> science. Uh, just one thing I always just because you know what it does. It gives people 
a different a different sense. It's like taking a picture from a different angle. You're like, that's super cool. Like it's just it's like that because as entrepreneurs, sometimes people don't see us as human. They're right. like, oh my god, I can't imagine you do that. I could never do that. And you're like, hey man, I just like have dinner and eat leftovers like you. And so it's yeah. always good to see see just another that. side of someone that's doing something so great. Well, um, here I'll, I'll give you a little bit. Okay, so the other day um, I was you know reading about astronomy. Um, and I was reading something very fascinating about star formation. We live in probably one of the coolest parts of the evolutionary, you know, time scale, because we live at the tail end of star formation. Um, you know, you see, you know, James Webb's telescope. You see hundreds of billions of stars. These there's galaxies, you know, till the end of time. We're at the tail end of star formation. Uh, approximately, you know, in the article, about 95% of all the stars that will ever exist in our universe have already been born, which is really cool. Um, I, when you look up at the night sky, I was really lucky because I went on a road trip to Calgary recently and we stopped at three in the morning to look up at the stars, drink champagne. It was it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. I, I mm -hmm. really had like a nerd freak out panic attack because it <laughs> was like a snow globe. I kid you not. We were able to see the dust clouds of our own Milky Way galaxy, which was insane. And the the scope and the scale of, you know, cosmic, you know, you know, galaxies and stars and whatever, nebulas. It's it's insane. It's really, really, really cool. I find that a lot of people are so caught up in a lot of things in their life, you know, work, mm -hmm. work-life balance, you know, social media, different things. I find learning about cool things really, it, it's almost like I can kind of like disassociate and just like learn about something cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always been really intrigued by, you know, really cool stuff. So I, I seek it out actually. Um, especially when I talk, when I said earlier in the, in the, in the dialogue, uh, you know, quantum studies or whatever quantum field theory, I'm referring to just like learning about the really, really, really small scale of what's going on around us, you know, and, and as a chef, you know, I'm basically a scientist. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what we do in the kitchen is nothing more or less than water gain or loss and heat transfer in mm -hmm. any way you can look at it, whether it's, you know, grilling something, sous vide, steaming, asparagus you know what I mean yeah learning about that kind of stuff correlates to my chef career as well as my day-to-day -day life because I just have a broader understanding about what's going on around me and why things are what they are and I had a really uh, interesting conversation with my friend Rhaenyra I'm like hey Rhaenyra I was thinking like what are memories made of you know like you can probably think back to your favorite birthday party years ago I can you know Mm -hmm. I can produce an image in my mind when I close my eyes of exactly what that looks like. But then you have to think, what is that made of? Like, what is physically there in my mind to produce those memories? And then, you know, we got into the talk of neurons and different things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's fascinating. It's very, very, very cool. And I find that science is a neglected, sub a neglected subject for sure. No, well, first of all, we could probably sit all day, Liam, and we're going to wrap up in a few minutes, guys. But um, so I took astronomy in school. <laughs> and so I totally love that. And I'm also a science geek, which I think a lot, um, you know, a lot of things does comes down to matter. Um, I actually teach brain health. So you're talking up my alley when it comes to memories. And um, here's the beautiful thing in case people want to start exploration around stars and so, so incredible like we we live very close to the planetarium right so we're, we're again we're very lucky in vancouver they have this gorgeous planetarium and a great friend of mine susan cameron she's just a, a very dear friend and um actually just a kick-ass real estate agent actually and so that's how we met and she for my birthday a few years ago i put it hanging she bought me a star so she bought me a star. You can buy stars. And now that we know that we're close to the end, the sale's on stars. Black Friday. She bought me a star. Uh, so my star she bought me is on, on Andromeda. Andromeda. So you can look up Andromeda. And it was so interesting because when it started, when I started to research Andromeda and got all the information and it talked about being a Pegasus and I have a tattoo of a Pegasus on my back. And I was like, hey, great stuff. So cool. very cool. Very cool. I am going to ask you one last question, but before we do, um, Liam, and obviously you got to come back onto the show because we got lots to talk about. And we're going to set a time to talk off camera too because we got lots of cool stuff to do. And that's why 
look at you guys. If there's anything I can tell you about, you know, a number of my guests, look, if you're out there and you want to come on the show, you know, this is not difficult. It's deb at devdrummond.com. Just reach out and let's have a conversation and see if mission accepted is a fit for you. But um, trust your gut, trust your gut, because the book that uh, Liam and I was in had a number, a large number of people in it and flipping through, it was just like something about something about me re- made me reach out to him for whatever reason. And look, sometimes we don't even know the reason, but here we are and we, as we talk and we uncover and there's fashion and there's entrepreneurship and oh, astronomy and oh, brain. I mean, this is kind of how, this is kind of how great things happen. Um, and you just got to follow your gut. You never know where it's going to go. So that being said, my friend, um, where can people reach out to you and where can they get their own puckering peach? Well, we do have a beautiful website, uh, puckeringpeach.com. Uh, we sell all of our garments there. We ship globally. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a one-stop shop. It's uh, the website, actually, I built myself. Uh, I had no idea how to do anything tech-related uh, when I started, but I was able to learn, of course, and we, we executed a fabulous website. Uh, to contact me personally, I have a, a fabulous Instagram. It's Liam Chernin uh, on Instagram, also Facebook. Um, but yeah, that's that's primarily where you'll you'll see my day to day content, cool stuff that I'm up to. Yeah. Cool. Okay. One last question before we call this call this a wrap. Um, completely off topic again, and it can only be one. It can't be a collection, and it can't be a can't be a playlist. You, my friend, are on your way to a desert island, just you and you, and you've got one. You've got a little bit of room in your suitcase for one vinyl, one piece of vinyl, one album. What's it going to be? What is the album you couldn't imagine not listening to for the rest of your days? Mm, it would have to be, oh, I'm stuck between two. I'm stuck between two. Um, I know. <laughs> uh, it, it's tough. I'll probably say the Born This Way album, uh, Lady Gaga. Absolutely. Okay. There is, okay. there is, there's something about, something about her, her music that really, like, of course, like she's a superstar. She's very talented. She's, uh, you know, one of the top uh, musicians mm-hmm. in the world uh but there's something about her not as popular music that also has a really really deep underseated meaning to me me and my uh best friends we were listening to heavy metal lover the other day and we were thinking we're like this is probably one of the best songs ever made it's not oh. anything you know super extraordinary or anything that there's just something about it that has a really really good place in my heart right and like the lyrics make sense and the the beat is you know phenomenal probably my answer if okay. i was if i was able to pick two though i would okay. pick uh i'd pick ariana thank you next um, All right. that album came out when i was going through a really really tough period in my life uh breaking up uh with my ex uh boyfriend uh it, it, was, it was really really tough it was really tough um and th- th- that music really helped me through um, perfect. so yeah perfect All right. So look, we're going to have to have you back on the show. Thank you so much, you guys, for being the best audience ever today. You are the boldest, which means you are going to share. You're going to review. You know how this works. We can only do this when you participate. We have a a, a healthy, dependent relationship upon each other. And look, if you want to see yourself there, you know what to do. We really need your support in the They Did It Tour project if you love music as much as clearly liam has been impressed by music then we need you to go to that crowdfunding page so that we can support music worldwide it is again something that we just received so freely and received so much from some great stuff coming up the pipeline if you are a woman entrepreneur and you want to get yourself on stage we have just opened up 99 spots for women entrepreneurs to be able to share what it is that you do and inspire others as part of the largest authorship and speakership that we've ever done around International Women's Day. And it is a two-year project. So reach out now. Thank you so much, Liam, for being on the show. Just love you guys. Love the audience. It's amazing. I know that we're going to be seeing you guys again next week. So until then, be groovy and bye for now. Thanks. Thanks.